Hey folks, welcome back to the Cheap and Cheerful series. Today we've got a double helping of pyramid type puzzles from GE. Uh, two tetrahedrons, so we've got on the left the Duomo Pyraminx designed by Justin Eplett. You can see his signature just there. And on the right we have the Master Pyraminx, which is a higher order version of the traditional Pyraminx, which I'm sure you'll all be familiar with. I actually was tempted to include the Pyraminx in this video because you can get very much cheap and cheerful, uh, extremely good sort of speed pyraminxes with magnets and everything these days, uh, but probably you know that already. And in any case, your collection should definitely have a pyraminx in it if it doesn't already. Um, I am, however, going to break out my favorite pyraminx speed puzzle, the Gon Pyraminx M, which is an amazing cube, uh, and use this as a point of comparison to show you what differs about these two pyramids over here. Uh, but first of all, just a little bit of info about these two puzzles. So the Duomo, as I said, was designed by Justin Eplett. Um, this is basically a shape mod of the Jing's Pyraminx, which some of you will be familiar with already. Uh, it's a really nice piece of design, and yet it's very, very cheap. So I got this for £6.99 here in the UK, um, but you can get it for just a couple of dollars or so if you get it from Z-Cube or somewhere like that. As always, I'll put links in the description for you. But anywhere you, you choose to pick this up, uh, it's definitely going to be within your budget. Very, very affordable. Um, but it's Qi, so you know it's it's made pretty well. Uh, the Master Pyraminx is a bit of an older design. I'm not sure how long this puzzle has been around, but uh, it's clearly not uh, belonging to the most up-to-the-minute era of extremely smooth, cheap speed puzzles in every category. Um, you st can, can still speed solve with this, but you have to be a little bit careful with it for reasons I'll outline in a couple minutes. Um, but this one will cost you about 8 or $9 on Z-Cube. I would expect if you buy it somewhere like the Cubicle, maybe it'll be about $12.00. Um, and if you buy it uh, here in the UK, maybe 11 or 12 pounds. So still not too expensive. A um, little bit maybe on the borderline of the cheap and cheerful boundary. But um, for me, I think it's an interesting enough puzzle and fun enough to solve that it's worth an extra pound or two if you need it. Or just, you know, throw it in your next bulk order at Z-Cube and you, you won't feel that price too much. Uh, so both, you know, fall for me into the cheap and cheerful category um, and both offer a lot of solving enjoyment for your money and they're both quite well-made puzzles. But now I'll show you a bit about how they work. So if we bring out our friend the Pyraminx. Now this guy, of course, uh, as you know, we have the famous Trivial Tips. Uh, so this is a corner turning puzzle. And uh, so that layer does turn as well as the main chunk here. So uh, below the Trivial Tips, we have our corner pieces that have three colors. Those are then connected to three edges. So each corner turn that we do, we're moving around three edges as well. There are six edges in total. So basically the main work of solving a pyraminx is around uh, permuting and orienting those six edge pieces, right? Um, because the trivial tips are, of course, trivial. The corners can just be sort of turned into place. And then it's all about putting the edges where they need to be. Uh, so it's a simple puzzle, but a classic. Um, and I'll get to this in the video I'm going to do about this puzzle here later on. Uh, but the Pyraminx is a great place to start with speed solving. There's a lot of interesting methods that you can learn and really not a lot of dependence on algorithms at all. So it's a lot of fun to speed solve. Uh, very, very enjoyable puzzle for that. Um, now, if we compare this to the Duomo, again, this is basically the Jinx Pyraminx. So what I say about the Duomo will apply to that as well. And you can immediately see some significant differences. So if we ignore the face pattern and just think about the piece types, uh, you know, we have our trivial tips here. But we don't have that on the Duomo. We just have these big chunky corners that actually participate in the solve, right? Um, so these, like the corners on the Pyraminx, are connected to three edge pieces. But then we also have these exposed centers, which we don't have on the Pyraminx. So that's a new addition to the solve. They're not, they don't add a ton of challenge, but there is another step in the solve in order to move those centers around. So it's a little bit of a different feel from the Pyraminx. Uh, you're not worried about any trivial tips and knocking them out of place during your solve. Um, every piece that you see does participate in the solve, and you do have the centers that can be swapped around and so forth. Um, I think it's really good to have a Jinx Pyraminx in one's collection. It's a classic puzzle. There are lots of other puzzles that are related to it, so being familiar with solving strategies for this will help you with other puzzles as well. And it's just enjoyable to solve on its own. In particular, um, I would recommend getting the Duomo because, uh, first of all, it's hard to find... Uh, a more standard Jinx Pyraminx. There is one now available from Shengshou uh, in Stickles Plastic, which I probably will get because it's very cheap uh, and show that off as well. 
Um, but I think the Duomo has a really attractive aesthetic to it. So in the standard Jinx Pyraminx, you have these really big, chunky edge pieces, and generally it's a pillowed shape. So the Shengsho one is like this, uh, and the old Mefferts ones are extremely pillowed. They look like big sort of steam dumplings or something. Uh, but this one, they've compressed the edges down inside the puzzle, and they're sort of nestled between these sort of overextended corner pieces. And I think that leads to a really attractive pattern on each of the faces. Um, and when it's scrambled up, it looks really nice as well. And by the way, at the end of my little discussion about these two puzzles, I am going to do a quick walkthrough walk solve of both the Duomo Pyraminx and the Master Pyraminx, just to show you how they work in practice. I'm going to try and do that more often um, with puzzles that I'm, I'm pretty happy with solving and I'm familiar with, because I do think it can be helpful to show you more directly how the pieces or how the puzzles really work during a solve. You know, you can get a sense for how they move uh, when I'm, I'm trying to solve them as you would normally. Um, that might be more helpful than just seeing me do random turns here and there. So I will be doing that more often. So that's the Duomo Pyraminx. Uh, really cheap yet very nicely built and very good looking puzzle in my opinion. Um, the Master Pyraminx. So here again we'll compare to the classic Pyraminx. Uh, so on the pyraminx, of course, we have three layers, uh, as you can see. So we got our trivial tips, the middle layer, and the bottom. Uh, on the master pyraminx, we can add one more to that, like so. So now we have four layers, right? Uh, so there's a lot more pieces here to solve, and that adds a lot of interest uh, when you are solving the puzzle. So now uh, you can solve it a few different ways. You can do it by reduction, which is what I'm going to do in the walkthrough solve. I actually reduce it to a Jinx Pyraminx, so basically to this one. Um, you can also solve it directly. There's not so many pieces that going piece by piece and not doing any reduction becomes tedious. Um, and any way you choose to solve it, uh, there's really not any sort of parity to deal with. Uh, when you do a reduction solve, you can end up with some uh, the centers swapped around in weird ways, but uh, that's not really parity as far as I can tell. Um, you just can easily get them back to place with a simple algorithm and, and they're based on algorithms we already know from other puzzles so it's really not a big deal but that's an interesting aspect of this puzzle so in going from the standard pyraminx to the master pyraminx we suddenly have the appearance of the single centerpieces that we also get in the jinx pyraminx and the duomo pyraminx uh, which is kind of kind of interesting to me we you know suddenly a, a centerpiece sprouts from nowhere then if we go to the professor pyraminx uh, then it expands further and we have a set of inner centers that is a sort of triangle of four pieces like we see here. Um, so basically that's why I like doing the reduction solve to a Jinx Pyraminx because we already have uh, single center pieces that function pretty much the same as these guys. So it just felt natural to me to try and reduce the puzzle to that form and solve it from there. Uh, as far as the functionality, um, it like I said, it, it doesn't feel like the latest and greatest, but it's a, a perfectly serviceable puzzle. The turns are smooth. It's got a clicky mechanism. Um, which is actually kind of nice. It gives the, the solve a sort of tactility. Uh, things sort of click securely into place every time you make a turn. Um, but, you know, it, I did find it taking a little bit of getting used to when I first got this puzzle. And also it has this sort of, I wouldn't say instability, but pieces can end up sort of sticking out and, and hanging in sort of weird positions like this. Um, it's very easy to fix. You can just bring it everything back with just one little touch like that. But it's just something to be aware of because if you do have pieces dangling out in space like that and then you immediately do another turn, you can get stuff really catching or feeling like it might even pop. I haven't had any pops yet, but I suspect it might be possible to have that. Um, other than that, uh, it, it's a really nice puzzle. I don't have other Master Pyraminxes, but I have heard from people who know and people who speed solve this puzzle that the Chi is pretty much considered the best one on the market. Um, there is some interest in trying to make this puzzle into a World Cubing Association WCA event, um, which I think would be great because the only tetrahedrons that are sort of officially sanctioned for competition uh, in speed solving is is just the Pyraminx. And as much as I love speed solving the Pyraminx, it is, you know, it's over quite quickly. Um, and, uh, you know, if you expand that to the Master Pyraminx, you have a lot more... Um, pieces to deal with there's new piece types that appear and, and there's more strategies that that can be available so uh, it doesn't take too long to solve as well so you know spectators wouldn't get bored with it um, but i don't think it's quite re yet reached a critical mass of interest um, the wca has extremely high standards for what they consider to be a puzzle of sufficient interest that they would add it to competitions 
Um, so even though the master pair minx has a community, there's lots of speed solving methods. There's, you know, proper random state scrambling programs and everything you would need to run it as a real event. Um, there still isn't any real motion towards doing that officially so far as I know. But I'm hoping that they do, because if they do, history suggests that then the major manufacturers like GE will go back to the drawing board and give us some really much better turning puzzles in that category. So selfishly, I'd love for people to get really into speed solving this puzzle because then I could get a better one in a year or two. <laughs> uh, but in the meantime, this is perfectly fine. I don't want you to, to feel that it's, you know, I'm giving it a negative review as such. Um, you know, it's still better than anything ever released by, say, MF8, for example. Um, but, you know, there are a lot of other puzzles from GE that I enjoy more than this one. Um, and in fact, its its neighbor here, I think, is an example. Uh, it's It also has a clicky mechanism, as you can hear, um, and it's it secures the pieces quite seriously in place. So when I go to make a turn, you can actually see the pieces kind of stretching out a little bit. Um, so it shows you how securely these click when you when you do make a turn. So you know it's quite a loud puzzle as well. I wouldn't take this on a quiet train or something because your neighbors will want to kill you but um, it does give it a nice tactility like the master pier minx and uh, because you are manipulating these big chunky corners all the time it is nice to feel that they are sort of locked securely in place when you make a turn um, i'm not sure it's particularly suitable for speed solving but it does slow you down for sure um, but you know I, I still can solve this puzzle pretty quickly and then i enjoy using it so on balance i think it works pretty well so hopefully that's enough to give you an idea of what these puzzles are like and, and how they feel. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go away and scramble these guys, and then I'm going to come back and we'll do a quick walkthrough solve. These are not tutorials, um, but I will just explain briefly what I'm doing and, and show you how I approach these. I find both of them enjoyable to solve. Like I said, in particular, uh, the Master Pyraminx is a lot of fun, um, partially because I just love solving puzzles by reduction. Um, and on that note, I will at some point track down a Professor Pyraminx and a, uh, what's the 6x6? Six six? I think it's the Royal Pyraminx, both of which are made by Mefferts, so I'm a little bit trepidatious about how the turning is going to be, but I will get those at some point um, and show those off as well. I just I found I really enjoy these tetrahedrons, and uh, I really enjoy, as I said, the reduction solve strategies, so it makes sense to get the higher order Pyraminxes sometime down the line. So when I do, I will come back and show those. In the meantime, uh, if you don't want to be spoiled uh, about anything to do with the solves of these puzzles, then uh, turn away now. Otherwise, uh, stay tuned, and shortly I'll be back to show you some walkthrough solves of these two puzzles. In the meantime, as always, take care, stay safe, stay healthy, and I shall see you in the next video. Okay, welcome back. Here we are with the scrambled Duomo Pyraminx. Looks like a pretty decent scramble there. Um, the way to solve this, it's a, like I said, it's a little bit different from a regular Pyraminx. Um, what I tend to do is first form a bottom layer. So I take essentially a layer-by-layer -layer approach, as, a, as one might do with a Pyraminx, but with a couple of differences in solve order. Um, so let's see what we got here. I can make a red layer up here. So we'll start with that one. We have one uh, edge piece, two edge pieces that are flipped incorrectly, so we can bring that out. And then we will pop that in the yellow side using just your standard down, down, up, up kind of stuff. Uh, this edge piece is also flipped. Bring that out. And we can pop that in as well. Oops, that's the wrong way. Do it that way. There we go. One last edge piece remaining. I managed to pick the most annoying side here <laughs> that has all the edge pieces flipped. There we go. So normally what I would then do is just make sure that the tip on the top is aligned with the uh, surrounding corners, but that was already the case, but just to show you uh, my thought process there. So in this particular case, I have one edge that's placed correctly and two that need to be flipped. Um, if you know the corresponding last layer case on a pyramid, so you can do that the exact same way. So now all of our edges are done, all of our corners are correctly oriented, and now we just have to deal with the swap of centers. This is very easy to deal with. All we need to do is find uh, two faces that need to swap their centers like this. We put one facing towards us on the front, one on the bottom, and then we just do down, down, up, up three times from the left.
and we're done. So that's a sample solve of the Duomo Pyraminx. Hopefully you can see the uh, performance of the puzzle is really good. All the turns are really smooth. It is very clicky, of course, as you can hear. <laughs> uh, but it's a great little puzzle, and it is a little bit different from the Pyraminx. And I have no doubt that there's some interesting methods for solving this that I haven't delved into yet. Um, I haven't spent quite as much time with this puzzle as I would have liked. I've spent a lot of time with the regular Pyraminx and know several speed solving methods for that one, but I don't know so much about the Jinx Pyraminx. So I will be looking into that and hopefully expand my solving knowledge a bit more. There's a number of puzzles that can be uh, related geometrically to a Jinx Pyraminx, so it seems useful to really know the ins and outs of this puzzle. Uh, it's another reason that I'm glad to have it in the collection. So next up, I will come back with a scrambled Master Pyraminx. Okay, here we go. We've got a fully scrambled GE Master Pyraminx ready to solve. Now, the way I will solve this, as I mentioned, is by reduction to a Jinx Pyraminx. And that's pretty straightforward, actually. Um, all we need to do is reduce the edges. So we form edge triplets on every edge of the Master Pyraminx. Uh, when we have six completed edge triplets consisting of one center edge piece and two wings, then we will have basically a giant Jinx Pyraminx. We can solve that then uh, as a Jinx Pyraminx by just using wide turns only, of course, so that we don't disrupt any of the edge triplets that we have created. So uh, normally you can solve the trivial tips at whatever point in the solve you feel like because they really don't matter. Um, but just to reduce the visual noise for you, I'm just going to take care of those right now, which of course you just turn them into place. It's really not anything to think about at all. And so let's get started on the reduction. So we'll take stock, see if there's any triplets that are nearly formed, and it looks like there are not. So I'll start with this red and yellow because we can pop that one in, bring this up, pop that one in, and that's our first triplet already. Now we have blue and red. This one is flipped, but we can quickly deal with that. Bring that out and over. And then we need another blue and red, which is already here. So let's see. Actually, this is looking quite promising, so I don't want to mess with that just yet. Bring this over, turn, turn, turn. And now we've got a second triplet. Uh, so we'll just tuck that away for the time being, and now we have, uh, I thought I saw, oh yeah, here we go. So this green and yellow triplet is ready to be solved. So where is the other green and yellow piece? That's the question. It is down here. Uh, let's just make sure I haven't broken up any. Yeah, these are my two solved triplets. Okay, good to keep track of these things. <laughs> so green and yellow is here, and it just needs to go down there. So the straightforward way to do that is to turn this, and then, Turn, 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 and there we go. We have three solved triplets handily tucked away on the bottom of the puzzle, although that will shortly change. So in the next phase of the reduction, we need to kind of slow down for a moment and take stock of where we're at. Ideally, what we'd like to have is the last three triplets to be all two-thirds solved, and then we just have a simple three cycle to do for the last pieces on each one. And we're not quite there yet, but we do have one last triplet that is nearly solved, so that's quite good. Um, what I'll do is I'll bring this one down, and then where's the other unsolved edge? It is there. Okay, so we've got them all in the same face. That'll help us to work out what we need to do. So here we have a nearly completed triplet. Here we have two less completed triplets. So what can we do with that? Well, we need to get a red and green in place down here. And we can do that by bringing this up, bring that in, turn and turn. Now we have two triplets that are most of the way solved. In fact, all of them. And now we just have a very simple three cycle left to do, which you can probably already envision for yourself. We just need to swap this one up here and do some turns and get stuff into position. So turn, 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 turn. And there we go. That's our Jinx Pyraminx. Easy peasy. Now the next step, we want to make sure that when we start our Jinx Pyraminx solve that we put a bottom layer together correctly. So we need to make sure that the uh, corner pieces are all of the same color. So here we have a red and a red, and the other red is over here. So we need to bring this down, bring this across, and bring this in, is that right? Yes. So now we have a red layer as our first layer. And what we can do is First of all, bring in this yellow and red. Note, 
as I said, we're using only wide turns, so we don't disrupt anything. Then blue and red can go here. Standard down, down, up, up kind of stuff. Then down, down, up, up for this guy. And a red layer is done. Now for the final layer, we first want to make sure that we align the top corner with the already solved faces on the bottom. It's not quite aligned yet, but now it is. And we can see here that this edge piece is actually solved. These two need to be flipped, which we can do with just our standard Pyraminx algorithm for this last edge case. And we're done. Uh, typically, you would actually end up with a kind of edge pseudo parity. Um, there's three different algorithms to switch these edges around. It's very similar to on the James Pyraminx, but you have some additional cases that are possible here. But there's only three algorithms, so you can just memorize them. Uh, or you can figure them out intuitively without too much effort. Uh, and yeah, that's that's the solve. Uh, it's a really fun puzzle. I really enjoy playing with this. There's definitely other ways of attacking it that don't involve reduction, but typically when I have an option of solving a puzzle by reduction, a higher order puzzle, I tend to do so because uh, you know one of the puzzles I really got into at the beginning of my speed solving career, uh, if you want to call it a career, <laughs> hobby really, um, is the four x four. And I love the reduction process. There's something satisfying about bringing the first stage of that puzzle together, um, condensing things into a more uh, comprehensible form. And then you have a secondary stage of the solve that can be much faster than the first. And it just kind of blazes you to the finish line. I find that really enjoyable. And that definitely works with this puzzle as well. Um, and in general, the Master Pyraminx is pretty nice because it's a bit forgiving. Um, there's enough pieces for it to be interesting and strategic to solve, but not so many that it becomes tedious. There's no parity to worry about. Um, and it's, it's just a really enjoyable puzzle that doesn't require a lot of memorization or anything. Um, so I really recommend giving it a try. And definitely if you've enjoyed any type of tetrahedral puzzle uh, of the lower, lower orders, like the Jinx Pyraminx and the uh, normal Pyraminx, then I definitely recommend adding this to the collection. I can't really speak for the higher order pyraminxes like the Professor or the Royal Pyraminx. I am tempted to look into those at some point because I do enjoy this puzzle so much. And I think it'd be more interesting to also have to do uh, a center reduction, which we didn't have to do here because there's only one centerpiece. We could just ignore it and solve it as we would on a Jinx Pyraminx, basically, with a couple of additional cases. But if we instead had a 5x5 Pyraminx and we had you know four centerpieces to solve, in the early stages, that would be pretty interesting, I think. So let me know if you have those puzzles. I'd love to hear your evaluations, um, and I, I may just uh, reach out and get one of those or both of them in the future and uh, let you know what I think of them. But in the meantime, get yourself a Master Pyraminx, get yourself a Dormal Pyraminx. Uh, they really are a lot of fun if you don't have them already. And in the meantime, as always, stay safe, stay healthy, take care of yourself, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Okay, bye-bye.